Hello there, friends across the internet, and welcome back to more of my Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker reaction playthrough thing. We're going back to the first. I did not expect this. We're up to the 86 quests, and we are returning to the Crystarium. Take this, Demogen, my spirit vessel. Why have you got it with you? Empty now, of course, but it should allow you to operate the tower's systems in the umbilicus. If even the smallest fragment of Elidibus's essence remains, it should be possible to locate it. As for access to the umbilicus, try seek out Lena for assistance. Chances are she still stands watch at the Ascensor Gate. I wonder if this time passed. Should she or anyone else have to ask after me, tell them I am living my life to the fullest, that I am happy, hardships and all. Well, we'd best be on our respective ways. God's willing, we will see each other again here long. I assume we're not going to need to spend much time on the first. Interesting that she's not at, she's actually in Lakeland. I suppose I could have teleported to Fort Job, which would have made sense. Everything here looks okay. So the final days are not happening here. That's good. Well, no, the final days are not happening here yet. Hello? Demogen, you are returned. Hello. Have you been well? You and the others? Uh, we've no shortage of troubles, but we're well enough. And then things are much the same for you as they always were here. My lord is doubtless enjoying himself. He said this to you? These exact words? Ah, to know that he is happy. It fills my heart with joy. Thank you for taking care of him. When next you see him, please tell him not to overexert himself. Futile the request, though it is. And tell him that all is well here. The peace you gifted us continues and we work hard to build new lives for ourselves. In the course of this we occasionally bicker, but we've never been more optimistic for the morrow. If I had to mention one dilemma, it would be the question of our governance. Even as we speak, debate rages on how on on over how we should run the Oh, debate rages on over how we should run the city in the Exarch's absence. Most would remind that the Settlement Council should continue to oversee the general running of the Crystarium, while representatives are elected to determine policy and handle diplomacy. Thus far, nothing is set in stone, but however we choose to proceed, we will not replace our Lord. No one could. Not. Now. Have we recently observed any unusual phenomena? No, I cannot say there have been. Curious that you should ask me this question, though. Some days ago, Reen came and asked the very same. She was rather unsettled, in stark contrast to how cheerful she has been of late. She and other Crystarium youths just hosted a festival, you see. It proved so popular, there were already plans for another celebration, one much bigger than the first. Between her preparations for the festival and the restoration of the empty, she struck me as happy and full of life. So when I saw her in a state of such worry, I couldn't help but feel worried in turn, especially since she wouldn't tell me what troubled her. So does she still have a connection 
to Minfilia. No, because you can't do because minfilia is gone. That was the point. I dare say she would be more willing to confide in you. May I ask you to broach the subject with her? You wish to enter the umbilicus? Very well, I shall fetch the key at once and take the opportunity to find Reen. Please wait for me in the city, in front of the cabinet of curiosity, shall we say. I'll be along as soon as I can. Hmm. So Reen has sent something. Or seen something. I mean, she of all the people here have, have got the greatest connection. I mean, she still has a connection to Hydland, doesn't she? Minstreling Wanderer. Right. Uh, where was I going? Cabinet of Curiosity. No, nope. not that one. That one. Fortunately. Ah, the following event cannot be skipped. You may wish to cancel any pending duty finder registrations. Interesting. So something important is about to go down. Do my eyes deceive? Is that truly damaging? Oh, hi, guys! Ha! It is! Full glad am I to see you hail and whole, my friend! What a wonderful surprise it is to have you back with us and at this most opportune time! In case you haven't heard, we are planning to produce a tome chronically events from the flood to the night's return. For this project, we intended to draw upon records kept by the world's peoples. Historical and contemporary first-hand accounts will be the centerpiece of the tome, but yours will be the one to crown them all. I have been asked to contribute a chapter on the soul, a subject that is key to understanding much of your endeavours. In the course of developing the spirit vessel, I gained valuable insights into travel beyond the rift, knowledge that will allow me to attest to your existence and deeds. We've got slightly more pressing... There is no end to the questions I would ask you, but if you could indulge me with just one for now. In your quest to restore the night, you faced many a formidable foe. Among them, who offered you the greatest struggle? Um. This may come as a surprise, but... T truly? I never would have guessed, but then if I could, I suppose I wouldn't have had to ask. It is a tremendously eye-opening answer, and we will see that your account of this battle features prominently in the tome. I, I know you'd love to talk it here off, Moen, but we really should be on our way. Those documents from Yulmor won't collect themselves. Of course, of course. And afterwards, would you care to join me for tea? I was hoping you might, might clarify a few points in your duties. Till next time, then. Do tell the others to look after themselves. Uh, overzealous friend in particular. Remind him not to overexert himself again and again till his ears fall off, if that's what it takes for him to take it to heart. Ah, <laughs> uh, they've got Gwaha's character down. Do 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 do. Is that the Warrior of Darkness? Hi, kiddies. Oh, it's you guys. It's her. It's really her. What are you doing here? 
if you're going to battle, I can give you some medicine. I made it myself. Best not, Ricky. You'd only give Rustam a cake. We've got to see Marwyn to get his advice. One of the guard finally agreed to teach us how to fight, but first we need to choose a fighting style. Well, I know that I wanted to be a mage. Ah, oh, kill isn't sure. Magic isn't really my thing, so I was thinking of taking up the axe, or the sword, or maybe the bow. Yeah, they all seem all right, but it's hard to decide, so I thought that's Moen. He knows a lot about he knows about lots of things. He isn't here? Oh. Ooh, ooh. Why don't you have the warrior darkness choose for you? What do you think suits Arco best? Axe or the bow? Hey, he looks like a young Ardbert, so. For protecting your friends, the sword. The sword? If you took up the sword, you could be just like... Brandon, the Warrior of Light. I love that tale. Let's borrow the book today. It's really popular, though. I hope it's still there. Thanks for helping me decide, Warrior of Darkness. I'll start with that style and maybe try something else later on. Brandon was the Warrior of Light. Did I ever specify previously that he had a name? And when I get really strong, I hope to have a bat with you. Bye, kiddies. Yes, they're the guys that we helped out in some of the... Some of the side quests. I can't remember which side quest. Lena's taking her time. Huh, such fun she's been having basking in the adoration of musty old bookworms and wide-eyed junglings, but does she spare a thought for me? Of course not. Oh. Oops. I waited and waited and waited, but she won't so much as acknowledge the presence of her beautiful branch, even though they're right here. Such a heartless thing, that sapling is. Cold and cruel and heartless. Uh, oh, faithful fair loveliest of branches, how I have missed you. <sighs> if you truly miss me, you should have cried for me at the top of your lungs the instant you arrived. Make up for it, you will call with... You, <laughs> you will call with twice the passion next time. And for there to be a next time, you've some few struggles to overcome. Oh, so, my adorable sapling, the world is on the verge of destruction, is it? How do I know this? Joined as we are, spying on you is as simple as sliding down the back of a rainbow. Would that I could aid you in your quest, but the fate of we fae folk is bound to that of the star. Whether it goes, so too do we follow, such is our way. The most I could do for you is spare you the pain by gifting you the sweetest of eternal dreams. But if escape's not to your liking, then you must struggle with your fellow mortals. Nod. Ah, but here are the ones you were waiting for. I wonder what manner of conclusion awaits at tale's end. Oops. Took your time. My apologies for the delay. Demogen! It's so wonderful to see you again. You doubtless have much catching up to do, so I shall leave you to it. I have taken the liberty of unlocking the umbilicus, and you may enter at your leisure. Green, come with us. We have, uh, problems. Big problems. I'm relieved to hear that everyone is well. I've had this feeling like a pit in my stomach and I was afraid that something might have happened. <sighs> Maybe I'm overthinking things, but it's just that... I'm the Oracle of Light, but I've never spoken with Heidelin, never once heard her call. Even so, I've always had this feeling deep inside me, a connection to something immense. These past few days, though, that connection has wavered, as if that intense, immense something was distant, then close, then distant again. And then the other night, I was jolted awake by the feeling it had been completely severed. Wanting some fresh air, I went to the window, and to my horror, the sky was ablaze like during the star shower. So she saw it. But then I blinked and everything was normal. 
The next day, no one said a thing. No one else had seen what I'd seen. As far as I could tell, nothing was out of the ordinary. I began to wonder if it was a figment of a half-remembered dream. What are you not telling me? I have to know. Please. It doesn't matter how terrible it is. I wonder how it would end, or the first and all the others. Would they just cease to be? It wasn't my imagination then. The doom we witnessed in Amorot has come again. I can't believe it. Like I told you before, all is well here in the first. So don't worry about us. Please look only to the threat before you. We're fine right now, and even if we weren't, we've learned how to survive. Should the final days reach us here as well, you may be assured we won't go quietly. There's nothing you can do, though. No, we'll hold on until you can find a way to save all of our worlds. So long as you continue your fight, so too will we, united in purpose beneath the blazing sky. Ah! Um, they're doing a good job of uh, manganese great sword. Eh, it's another kind of boring model. Fortunately, we have this one. Green wears a look of steely resolve. You're heading to the Umbilicus to consult with Elidibus, right? I'll do some consulting of my own and speak with Lena. Decide how might how we might best prepare for the final days. So it's farewell for now, but we'll see each other again, I'm certain of it. Right, speak with the gatekeeper. I'm wondering if there is anything that I could do on the first. Ah, Mistress Demogen, welcome back. The captain has told me all. Give the word and I will show you to the ocular. In we go. wonder if we'll get to hear Ardbert while we're here. Flashback. Hmm. Wow, this place is a mess. <laughs> Link. Biometric authentication complete. Please state your business. Uh, we want to speak to Elidibus. <laughs> Acknowledged. Reinitializing Sitka's tower systems. Oh. Searching for Elidibus entity. <laughs> Lidibus. Target located in subterranean core power accumulator. Projecting image. Oh, there you are. My home. My friends. No more than a dream. <sighs> huh. 
You. Why have you awakened me? Need to know I more. No sense those places beyond. All Lord Zodiac. You must explain all. He's gone. Without you there. So. He is fallen. And my brethren's souls returned to the star. The doom we sacrificed so much to prevent is come again. Old burdens now yours to bear. Mm -hmm. But if this is Van Daniel's design, then I, as Elidibus, have a duty to fulfill. Your unsolicited act has restored to me some few memories of the convocation. Oh, the returning of the crystals. Such knowledge as I have, I will share. Because he's lost so much of himself. Thank you. I do this not for you. I merely perform my duty, as I have ever done. Where to begin? Ah. The end. The end. Your understanding of what caused the final days is consistent with our own. The decay first took root where the currents were weakest. Yes. A conclusion drawn by him. Fan Daniel. Not the him of here and now, but as I knew him. Long, long ago. Having shed light upon the phenomenon, he dedicated himself to devising a countermeasure. Were it not for his knowledge of the Celestial, we would never have made the connection, and thence forestalled the final days. And though he inherited that noble soul, how different this last incarnation. Interesting. So consumed by self-loathing and hate. So I'm on kind of corrupted the version of it. Elpis. Yes. The name is familiar to me. Yet I know it not as a flower, but a place. Oh. A testing facility for determining which of our creations were fit to be released into the world. Ah. Many worked there. And before joining the convocation and assuming the title of Fan Daniel, he was their chief. Interesting. He was Hermes. Uh -huh. Okay, so they're sticking with the great uh, the Greek god naming thing. That is all I know. The crystals tell little of the lives the fourteen led prior to their induction. Elpis itself would tell even less. Nary a ruin has survived. Oh, wait. I saw you there, in Elpis. What? No, I did not, but I did. I did. A lingering trace of impossibility. And a truth that fills my heart.
My memories remain clouded, I fear. However, so we've they have been there. To me one possible course. You must travel to Elpis, to the time when Hermes served as its chief. Time travel. In glimpsing the Exarch's memories, not only did I make his summoning magic mine own. I also of course, we're going to use the freaking crystal tower to time travel. Why would we not? Which, having absorbed my empowered essence, now harbors an abundance of energy. As such, I believe I can deliver you unto the past. Okay, so this is going to be one of the zones that we haven't got access to, yeah? Moment. Or is it just going to be for a cutscene? I don't mind which. Given the eons that must be traversed, <coughs> the gateway will not be fully formed. Your form will be less tangible still than those warriors of light I had summoned. In all likelihood, none will be able to oh, see. Oh, okay. We'll get to explore as a ghost, though. Yet even should you manage to interact with others, you will be unable to affect meaningful change. But yeah, because it's the ancient past. For the reality you wish to save, the reality to which you must return, exists as a result of the final days. You cannot reshape the past to undo the tragedies of the present. You cannot unmake the sorrow and suffering fated to come. Yes, that will split off the timelines and the Infinity Stones will not help. In full knowledge of this, Will you still entrust your life to your foe and make the journey? Yes. Very well. I shall cast you unto the river of How are we getting back? Let this be my final act. You must input the commands. I no longer have the authority. First, you must reconfigure the systems, that the tower's ether may be channeled for the magic. Yeah, I can do that. Complete whiz with ancient Algon technology. The preparations are complete. The gateway will soon open. Return at once to the ocular. The question is, is this a good idea? All appears to be in order. The ether flows unimpeded. The magic should consume every last mote of my essence. So Why are you surprised? Did I not say that this will be my final act? Lord Zodiac is no more. There is nothing for me here. The ones I love and long to see again are waiting in that promised land beyond memory and dream. All this completely now go, warrior of light. Go and do not look back. Will this completely obliterate him? As in no going to the live stream or anything. I suppose the Assians don't, do they? Or do they? Thank you, Elidibus. Well, Hydalin, I take my leave of you. Yours is the mantle of the last of us. May you have the joy of it, the burden and the solitude. It falls to you now, you and your champion. To save our star.
So th that very much impl implies that Hydlin was something that they did not like because of what she did to Zodiac. It doesn't paint her as the villain in that regards. But, I don't know. Something about it's not sitting right with me. We... We've done this before. I didn't think it was as sparkly last time. Smash. And here we are. Oh, is this why Elidibus has seen us then? Because he saw us in the past. So Elidibus is going to be here. Oh, they've got their actual... Proper shapes. Well, it's big. Unable to execute certain actions due to research restrictions. Transcending the boundary between existence and nihility. Guide like man. The man stands dutifully by the etherite like device, a guide for this facility in all likelihood. You attempt to get the man's attention, but if he sees or hears you, he gives absolutely no indication. As Elidibus warned, it appears your form is intangible. The device is reminiscent of an etherite. Perhaps it is possible to attune with it. Despite attempting to channel and focus your energies, you fail to attune with the device. You can only assume it operates differently. The remarkably large man wears a black robe and a half mask, much like the phantoms you encountered in Mara Lementorum in the recreated Amarot. It would seem you have made it to your destination. You gesticulate wildly and shout all manner of greetings and obscenities, <laughs> but the man does not so much as glance in your general direction. Interesting that they are all just giant people. I mean, we saw them in the cutscene. Uh, in the trailer, rather. This is the right place, yes. Propylion? Judging by the woman's words, this facility is called Propylion. Which I'm pretty certain I pronounced wrong. We attempt to gently prod the woman to attract her attention, but feel nothing. And it seems neither does she. Story of my life. I mean, um, moving on. <laughs> well, this is definitely not what I was expecting to be doing today. Uh, I assume we can just walk through it, Demma. No? Yes? It's. It's a door. And here we are, Elpis. Hello, Hades. Well, well. How rare to receive you in person. To what do we owe the honor? Oh, just a few odd tasks. We'll be here a while. You're welcome to stay as long as you see fit, of course. As a matter of procedure, however, I must ask that you kindly remove your masks. You're wearing yours. Come now. Is this truly necessary? Surely you can tell who we are. 
who you are, perhaps, but I am far less infamous. Regardless, if we do not follow protocol, it is our hosts who would be held accountable. So, please, do favor us with your handsome face. Hmm. <sighs> Hold on. Hold on. Satisfied. H how? I thank you for your cooperation. You are free to go about your business. the by you see it too yes they can both see us i haven't the foggiest what you're talking about <laughs> you liar hmm that's odd it's right here a bit thin in the ether but there's no mistaking it the colour of its soul is almost identical to Azem's. Who is this familiar stranger, then? Do you suppose she created it? Rather unusual for a familiar to have a soul, though. I should recognise the voice, shouldn't I? Don't ask me. All I know is that it's trouble. Doubly so if it's her spitting image. <laughs> so let's leave it be. Come now. Hmm. It's trying to say something. <laughs> but it's literally too intangible to form words. Why don't you give it some ether? Spare a snifter of your bounteous reserves. Who do you take me for? Why, a dear friend, of course. One who wouldn't let acts of kindness, such as my accompanying him on errands to far-flung outposts, go unrewarded. <laughs> <sighs> The despair of Emmett Selk. I suggest you close your eyes, or this may be unpleasant. <laughs> Warm. Is it supposed to be Hermes then, the purple? Is that supposed to be the you old Fandam? your eyes. Have you turned us into something really weird? No. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, you made us proper height. Thanks. That's why we had to close our eyes. Oh, you even adjusted its size. The better to indulge your whim. This way, it will be easier to communicate. How very thoughtful of you. And may I applaud your artful reinforcement. Without further ado then. I was Hithlaeus. Greetings. I am Hithlaeus, chief of the Bureau of the Architect. Sulking beside me is the most honorable Emmett Selk of the Convocation of Fourteen. <laughs> Of course. And how might we address you, my new friend? My new friend. A fine name. And I'm pleased to see you understand our words. 
So, tell us, whence have you come? The thinness of your essence suggests you weren't created here. Nope, that would be from the far, far future. Uh, how do we answer this question? You do not know? Or cannot say? Hmm. Allow me to ask a different question, then. What brings you here? Well, this... Well now, the same as us. How odd. Perhaps Azim wished to come too, but had to settle for a familiar. If she truly wished to be here, then she would be. To that. Right you are. My apologies if we've given offence. The two of us can discern the colour of souls, you see. And yours happens to resemble that of a friend. Eh, uh, yes. And with your purpose matching our own besides, we jumped to a hasty conclusion. We are here to speak with Hermes, the chief overseer of this facility, which we also intend to tour in order to gain greater insight into the man's work. Mm-hmm. We, I say, though this is Emmett Selk's charge. I am here only to serve as his guide. <laughs> And I should be happy to serve as yours as well, by way oh, of an handy. apology for the misunderstanding. It's fine. Are you suggesting that we bring it along on official business? This thing we know next to nothing about? If you harbor suspicions, better to keep it close than leave it to its own devices. Wouldn't you agree? If the dice makes a good point. Besides, having a mysterious life form in tow is the norm rather than the exception here. <laughs> Emmett is already done with this shit. Look at him, he's so young and standing upright. Welcome, my friends, to the testing ground of creation at Heaven's Edge. Elpis. Oh. This was the place. This was the place from the trailer. The place in the sky. <gasps> oh, gosh. That... This presence. Is that Vinar? Hello. Wait, what are you? Hermes! Visitors! We have visitors! So this is Fan Daniel before Fan Daniel. So, in the grand scheme of things I was not expecting. What secrets are you hiding, I wonder? Are you talking to us or Hermes? Huh. So, um... Yeah. Hi, new zone in the distant past. Holy shit. Just when you think, oh yeah, how much more can they really pull to surprise you in this weird world? It's like, oh yeah, okay, we'll just throw you into the past and give you an entire zone to explore. With the Asians. In case you didn't know, it's rude to stare. Stop. <laughs> this is hardly my first time here, but the scenery never fails to take my breath away. Why, well, it feels as if you could just reach out and touch the heavens. Now then, to begin our guided tour. Perhaps you already know these things, but for the sake of thoroughness, I shall start with the basics. Using concepts to give shape to ether, creation magics allow us to bring forth anything we desire, be it inanimate objects or living beings. Anyone may conceive of concepts, but they must all undergo evaluation at the Bureau of the Architect. As part of that process, living beings and certain arcane entities may be sent here to Elpis for in-depth observation and study. 
fascinating facility, isn't it? I dare say you will enjoy touring it with us. I dare say you would be right on that. It reminds me an awful lot of the structures in the Sea of Clouds, obviously. So we've got some some creatures that are hostile. And then we've got weird snakey uh, the weird snakey things are hostile. Butterflies are not. And we've got unicorns, because of course we've got unicorns in pretty flowers. Monoceros? <laughs> yes. Monoceros meaning one horn, obviously. Jusix? Nikias. Obviously, Zeus and Nike. Some of these we've seen in verse. Uh, Phadius. Don't know. Euclidus. As in Euclidean geometry, one assumes. I wonder, crabs, um, I wonder in their anticipation of what people would do when presented this, I wondered, did they think, you know, people are just going to pick up the second quest and follow through? Or do you think they're going to, do, do you think Squeenix knew that they, people would do exactly what I'm doing now? You of me? Yeah, they've all got kind of subtle variations on Memnon. Um, on classic Greek characters from myth and legend and history. They have things to say. And what have we here? Don't ask me why, but my latest creation won't eat anything but bicolored gemstones. Yeah, we'll need to get the next part of the quest to get down here. I... <sighs> Hippogriffy style things. And th this is a reasonably sized zone as well. Oh, well, I know what I'm really looking forward to doing next time then. Because. <sighs> I'm literally blown away. I know I'm not well and, and that things have been hitting me quite hard over the last couple of story beats because I, I tend to get more emotional when I'm I'm not feeling you know quite with it in and of myself but this this is so far outside of what I was expecting to see in this expansion don't get me wrong it, it could be that what we do here I mean in fact what we do here is almost certainly going to give us some of the answers that I expect to have answered by this expansion. But this is not how I was expecting to get them. At all. But yeah, I, 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 I do not have the energy <laughs> to play anymore today, unfortunately. What? An absolutely astound. It, yeah, when when we saw this in the trailers, it was like, "That's really pretty. What's it gonna be?" And it's like, okay, it's it's it, it could be another area, another dungeon, a zone, a raid, something like this. This this was not. This was not what I envisioned at all. Getting to spend time 
proper time. I'm going to stop now, because otherwise I'm going to gush more. And I, I think you've got my point. Um, let me know, folks, down in the comments below. Or link me to your videos for, of yourself where you have seen this for the first time. I think... One, one of my videos that I will go back and watch now and again is the, the bit where I see Amalot for the first time. Yeah, I, I love seeing my reaction to that. But this... Dude. Catch you all in the next bit, folks. Happy end walking. Cheerio. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, why not click the like button and consider subscribing. Remember, you can ring the bell notification icon to get notified when new videos go live. And until next time, cheerio.